first of all, there is nothing funny about blood donation. It's a very serious issue. It's about saving lives. But um, I got a tour around blood laboratory while preparing for the campaign. And strangely enough, uh, some people felt a little bit uh, uncomfortable seeing all the blood bugs hanging down. But I find them quite aesthetically pleasing. Maybe that makes me a weirdo or a vampire. So Dominic, could you tell me why did you take part in this training program? Hmm. I think that migration is a key political issue for the 21st century and that uh, countering the rise of the far right in Europe is a very important task. And uh, because we want a diverse society and that's worth fighting for, I guess. Yeah, okay. Why are you taking part? Um, so, I've been working in the migration sector uh, in Ireland for the last five years and I've been watching what's happening in Ireland and then in European Union and I've noticed a gap uh, in terms of support for the freedom of movement rights. So when I heard about this initiative I got very excited because I was thinking that finally there is something directed at EU migrants um, some finally that we, we can start discussing this issue. And uh, what have your campaign been about? Um, so, my campaign was um, addressing the issue of discrimination against Polish nationals in Ireland. Uh, Polish nationals in Ireland are the biggest minority, uh, but they also suffer a high level of uh, discrimination um, from individuals and, and from also state agencies. Um, so, I've decided to do something to address this issue, to raise awareness about that, but also to challenge the negative discourse around Polish nationals in Ireland that they are not really valuable members of society. So, I've decided to do this campaign called Bloody Foreigners, um, and this is about blood donation. It's about challenging negative stereotypes, it's about uh, reclaiming the whole uh, negative connotation with blood and foreigners. It's about owning the space again. So, and it's also about being a part of community, an active part of community, um, and about saving lives, because blood saves lives. And how about your campaign? Uh, we organize, we're gonna organize a human library in Berlin to raise awareness on the everyday obstacles uh, non-German EU citizens face uh, with a focus on Berlin, how they um, um, face obstacles through the public administration. Mm -hmm. And we're still in the uh, planning process, so we had to postpone it as it was hard to find participants for it. And we're probably going to do it in two months, I guess. Right. We're going to consult a lawyer and he will advise, uh, prepare, um, providing advice for the participants. We will do a round table and what is the interesting part is our human library where participants, non-German EU citizens, going to be like uh, living books mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to invite uh, like civil society to be uh, the readers of those books. So it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation where one can have uh, questions and answers on yeah, to find something out about the lives of non-German EU citizens. And uh, I think it's quite um, contrary to what you are doing mm. because if I would do something uh, related to blood in yes. Germany, it would immediately raise like a blood and ground, which was the um, the yeah the speaking of the of the fascists yeah. during the uh, Second World War. Yeah. And uh, so I'm doing, let's say, the opposite of what you are doing. I'm doing something silent with a very basic language, not as rough as uh, bloody foreigners, for yeah. instance. Do you think it's rough? Do you think it's... Yes, somehow, because you refer to purely organic being of, yeah. of humans and you somehow reduce them on the very natural um, yeah, body and yeah. physics in that sense. Yeah, I mean, for me, blood, because I've been a blood donor since I was 18, so for me it's a natural thing that I do every couple of months. So I, I never really think about it as a rough thing, but in a, in a way it is a symbolic thing, because when we look at the discourse that the right-wing parties have around nationhood, about migration, they don't recognize anyone who doesn't share the blood as a member of the society. Uh, and here, through blood transfusion, people will share the blood together. So in a way, yes, it is, it is um, symbolic in that way, and it's also symbolic in the way that we are uh, taking away this uh, uh, insultive uh, term that people are being addressed with and trying to turn that into positive, uh, into positive spin. 
Maybe that's why some people don't like it. Maybe, you know, I, I never thought yeah. about that because I, I, you know, I'm very comfortable with blood. So uh, that makes me a vampire, I know. Um, yeah, but yeah, you, you're right. Uh, but I don't think that your campaign is, um, is silent. Um, it's somehow a very cozy atmosphere, very yeah. comfortable atmosphere. So I think the participants need to feel very safe yeah. because they're already also exposing themselves yeah. to some stranger people. And this is maybe somehow what we could relate to yeah. in our two uh, campaigns, as both is, is exposing, yeah. exposing in a certain way. Yes. So the one more... Uh, related to the mind, yeah. to the spirit, and the other really through pure yeah. organs. Yeah, because books, like human library, that means books, books, education, education is revolution. Um, so there you go. I think uh, it's very powerful to hear stories because sometimes it's very abstract to read something in very academic way about you know, numbers and percentage. And when you actually hear story of an everyday story, especially that most of the policies and practices that are in our society, they don't account on to um, exceptional situations. Mm -hmm. So if you don't particularly fit within the particular situation, then you just fall into a gap. So if you have stories like that, where people actually are struggling because they, don't, they can't fit within this framework, then that's quite powerful and, and that's how you change the society. But you know, each, each, each model and, and, and tool is different for each audience because we have, we actually, experience a little bit of a negative response to our name because people find it too offensive and they think and they were sending us actually emails and, and letters saying like why would you use a racist term for a, a campaign yeah, i think this is the genius part of yeah. the campaign and uh, i would have a weird question as, yeah did the blood look different the blood. No, when I was in, in that uh, laboratory doing the tour around, uh, you know, looking at each stage how the blood is being tested, it doesn't matter your gender, your age or your so-called race. Um, the only difference in the blood color might be if you have too much iron in your blood or too much um, uh, oxygen or if you have leukemia. So that's the difference in blood. But other than that, it's true, like one race, human race, and we all inside, we're all the same. Yeah, we could need such a, such a campaign in Germany as well, as I guess the rates of blood donors are very low yes. over there. And you also have the opt-in version to yes. be an organ donator in that sense. But uh, what I hope for our campaign is a very basic yeah. hope. So we don't expect a huge impact for the whole society or to change the society through that, but to provide help and support for the non-German EU yeah. citizens who, who eventually take part yeah. in the campaign and who could tell their stories because Absolutely. I think they have uh, very interesting, yeah. uh, interesting stories Absolutely. to tell. And, um, and the same thing is for blood recipients. So people who are migrants and receive blood from another person, that is actually quite quite touching uh, story. But you know what is funny? I think, I find it funny at least, all those neo-Nazis who believe in purity of blood, when something happens to them and they need blood transfusion, would that make difference for them? Is it an immigrant blood or is it a pure German blood? Mm -hmm. And then how will they react to know that actually they got, they don't know what blood they got, they are contaminated. I think I've already watched a movie about that, yeah. where, this, where this topic was uh, referred to. And uh, when finally the, the Nazi or the fascist yeah. found out that the blood was by a migrant, by a foreigner in yeah. his terms, um, he completely freaked out. But it had a happy end. In yeah. the end. So he changed his mind. Yeah, so brilliant. There you go. There yeah. you go. And now I was just uh, thinking about your project here. Um, you know, the old uh, traditional way of passing uh, information from one generation to another through storytelling, where people used to gather around a uh, fire first or there in the evening and grandfather would tell a story to a, a child because there wasn't any books. And that was a human library at that time as well. Oh. And I find it quite interesting that there is a still way of using this model of connection intergenerational connection, connection, but also international connection. That is actually pretty cool. I would like to hear more about that campaign. Yeah, you have to tell me about that. So we see that there's plenty to talk about. Yeah, that yeah, stuff, yeah. And we yeah. could continue and continue yeah. with that campaign. Yeah, because so. I am by trade an anthropologist and ethnograph. So for me, those kind of old traditional way of connection between human beings are quite important. So, um, so yeah, that is really touching me on a personal level when I hear a story about human library. Uh, yeah, I think I might bring it to, to Dublin as well. Yeah.
There you go. There you go.